Good afternoon, it's 3.30pm and you're listening to OCRFM on 98.3 Colac and District or 88.7 along the coast. I'm Felicity Anderson and this is Animal Nation. I hope life has been good to you over the last week. Wasn't it a gorgeous weekend? But I think winter is well and truly here now. Coming up on the show, I'll be speaking with Chris Dalforce. Chris stormed onto the animal rights scene in 2014 with the release of Lucent, a film that took viewers on a confronting but profound journey through the Australian pig industry. He is currently working on his next film, Dominion, due for release in February 2018, which will expose all the ways humans use and abuse other species. Chris will also soon be launching his new website, the Aussie Farms Repository, which will be a comprehensive, freely available one-stop shop of videos, photos and in- industry information for use by activists for animal rights campaigns. We'll also be talking to Chris about the charges he faces this August in the Cootamundra Law Courts, relating to footage on his website, aussiepigs.com. This case will be the first Excuse me, this case will be Australia's first ag gag trial, so regardless of the verdict, the precedent set will be an important one. I hope you can stick around for that conversation coming up after this short break. Welcome back to Animal Nation. I have Chris Delforce on the line. He- Hello, Chris. It's great to have you on. Good afternoon. Now, we don't have a lot of time, so let's just get straight into it. Um, I wanted just to briefly talk about your film, Lucent, your first film, which, fe- which um, focused heavily on the Australian people pig industry. I was wondering why you chose that subject matter. Uh, I think pigs are very easy for people to relate to and I was getting a lot of material in, footage from over 50 different farms across the country and I kind of needed somewhere to, some way to put it all together in a way that people would actually watch it and I could do justice to the suffering that was being seen in all of that footage so I think Lucent was the result of that and i um, kind of my attempt to get back at the pig industry after seeing some pretty awful things. I can imagine um, 50 different farms, you say. It's, so that's clearly a comprehensive expose of the entire industry. Yeah, that was definitely the idea, try and cover every aspect of it and try and break down, firstly, the myth that it doesn't happen here in Australia, that animal cruelty and suffering doesn't happen here, and also the idea that the myth that when it does happen, when these you know, these incidents of horrific cruelty do happen, that they're just one-offs, that they're rogue operators or bad apples. Um, I just wanted to show that it absolutely wasn't the case. This is standard practice across the board. Yeah, and I think it certainly did that. Now, your next film, Dominion, according to the website, you, you're going to expose everything that humans do to use and, ex- use and abuse other species. So what's, what's been your inspiration for that? I'm hoping it will kind of become the Australian version of Earthlings, which is a well-known uh, documentary made about 12 years ago now. Yes. Um, and you know, every time someone watches Earthlings these days, they say, "Oh, well, it doesn't. It's not from Australia. It's not relevant, or it's too old." So I'm trying to create a new tool, basically, that activists can use to show their friends and family to say this is happening in our country right now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping it will kind of serve as an Australian earthlings. I think that's going to be a really powerful, a powerful message because obviously we, you know, we don't like to think that these things are happening in our own country, and certainly people, it's almost like we don't want to feel badly about the industries that we've supported throughout our lives. So I think that kind of information for the Australian consumer is going to be groundbreaking, really. Yeah, I certainly hope so. Now, how's the footage been collected, Chris? Um, it's come from quite a number of different sources. There's exposés happening pretty regularly you know, throughout Australia these days, with slaughterhouses and um, maceration of egg, um, the males in the egg-laying industry, for example, came out about a year ago. So there's all this uh, amazing footage that's coming out, most of it coming from undercover investigators, and uh, I'm just kind of collecting it all and trying to turn it into something that can give a, a pretty comprehensive overview of animal agriculture. It must be harrowing, harrowing having to spend so much time sorting through horrific content like that. Yeah. How, how, how do you manage that? How do, how do you not let that impact you well, too badly? To be honest, you, you do kind of become a bit desensitised to it. And I think I've probably watched more slaughterhouse footage than just about anyone, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage. And it's, yeah, it's... 
you, you do kind of get used to it, which is sad to say, and you kind of almost want things to affect you. You want to see horrific stuff. You want to be able to cry from watching footage. It just doesn't happen much anymore. So it's almost a relief when you can see something and, and, and think, oh, God, that's horrible. And be I'm affected. Kind of waiting for that to happen. But I kind of comfort myself when I'm watching these horrible things by thinking I, I am trying to do something about it at least. I've got an outlet for it. If I was just watching it without an, any idea of what to do, um, which was, you know, me not too long ago, a few years ago, I think I'd, I'd be feeling much more lost. Yeah. I think what you say about the desensitisation is really important because obviously for people who actually work in these industries, desensitisation is essential for them to cope. And yeah, I think the public needs to understand that you know, what, what happens to, to animals on, in these industries is, is terrible but, and the people who are working with them need to shut down their empathy to, to allow them to do it. Yeah, and that's it. Most slaughterhouse workers, they're not horrible people. They're not psychopaths. They just, you know, they, they might start the job loving animals and by the end of the first day they have to not think about them as animals. They have to think about them as stock. It's the whole, the, the way the system is designed, the way it has to work. And, uh, yeah, I can definitely kind of feel empathy there for what the workers are going through. Yeah. I think that's an important subject that we need to talk about every now and then. With the footage being what it is, Chris, how, how do you... Obviously, a lot of people don't want to see it. They, you know, they just... They want to stay in their little bubbles of denial. So how are you balancing that with, you know, it, as far as creating a film that will have a wide reach and that will be uh, almost palatable, for want of a better word, to a, to a broad audience? I guess that... Uh my aim is for this to be more of a tool for activists that they can sit down with their friends and family and, and say, you know, I dare you to watch this, I dare you to see what's actually happening. But it's also for those people who genuinely want to know. And, um, you know, until recently, it's been difficult for people to actually find out the truth because it's so well hidden. These industries rely on secrecy. They rely on being hidden away. And everything I'm doing um, is about bringing, you know, breaking down that secrecy, bringing it all out into the light so that people who do want to find out about it, they can go and, and watch a film or they can go to a website and see it all laid out yeah. for them. Brilliant. And what are your hopes for release? Are you planning on, you know, hoping for a general release? Uh, I, I was thinking I'd have a few screenings around the country, similar to what I did with when I released Lucent. Um, so a few cinema screenings and then I was probably just going to put it online for free because I, I just want as many people to be able to watch it as, as possible. I don't want any barriers to anyone being able to see this stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. It's just vital information, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, the Aussie Farms Repository is a website you're working on as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I've been working on it for a few years now, sad to say, but it's finally just about ready to see the light of day. It's a huge comprehensive database of photos, footage, campaign materials, industry documents, research articles, um, information about farms and slaughterhouses, basically everything animal rights related um, and specific to Australia, all in one place and open for contribution by anyone. So anyone who happens to get footage from inside a, a, a factory farm or a slaughterhouse or anything like that will now have a place that they can um, they can upload it to anonymously if they if they want to, um, and which can then potentially be seen by anyone who wants to see um, who, who wants to see what's out there. So they can search by category or by tags or anything like that um, to find the most recent or best footage from kind of any aspect of animal abuse in Australia. That's an incredible resource. Uh, obviously, you'll have a verification process um, to yeah, ensure right. that the footage is genuine. Yes, yeah, so there'll be a number of trusted accounts, uh, various animal rights organisations across the country, but for individuals who want to upload material, it will all need to be approved before it actually goes live. And so when did you say the release date was? I'm hoping for September. September. Brilliant. And so that will just be an amazing resource for activists all yeah, globally, really, but particularly for Australian activists. 
Now, you're facing court next month um, on what's referred to as ag-gag charges. And for um, people who don't know what that is, it's agri- the agricultural gag. That's the first time in Australia anyone's been charged for basically for collecting images of an industry and or uploading them, basically just standard practices or sharing them online or distributing them in the media. So what can you tell us about that at this stage? I know we have to be careful about what we discuss. Sure. Um, it's interesting because it's actually a fairly old law. It's a, the 2007 Surveillance Devices Act in New South Wales. It's the first time that it's been used in this way to target activists, to target uh, footage of, of standard practices in factory farms and slaughterhouses. So I've, I've been charged, um, I've been given 10 charges. Six of those relate to publishing footage of, publishing footage captured from a, a surveillance device from five piggeries in New South Wales and one slaughterhouse, which is the it's the largest pig slaughterhouse in the country. And that footage was actually the first time in the world that the process of carbon dioxide gassing um, as a stunning method was shown to the public. So it's the first time really anyone in the public has, has seen what's actually happening in that process. And that's a process that was... been calling humane for over 20 yeah. years. And it's obviously, it's not humane at all, it's horrific. Can you just describe that briefly for people who may not be aware of what happens? Yep, so the pigs go three at a time into these gondolas, these kind of cages, and they're lowered into this pit of carbon, di- carbon dioxide gas. And over the next 30 to 60 seconds, uh, it's, it's quite hard to watch. They start to scream and panic and thrash around and really fight with every last breath. Um, and the carbon dioxide actually reacts with um, mucous membranes. It kind of, uh, it forms carbonic acid, so it's almost turning their insides into acid in a way. It's kind of burning them from the inside out. And it's just a horrific way, a horrific way to go. And as I said, the industry has been calling it humane, but it's the furthest thing from that. And so you're, you've basically been charged for just showing the public what what the industry does day in, day out as standard practice. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Is there anything else you wanted to discuss about the court case, Chris? Is there any way people can support you or, as I said before, I, I know I, we need to be careful about what we discuss, but I think there's a lot of people who probably would want to support you and is there a way they can do that? Um, at this stage, I'm keeping it fairly, fairly low-key. I think if we're going to try and get kind of a big media um, uh, media reach for for it. It'll probably be after the fact. We'll see what happens, see how it goes. Um, as you said before, it's, it's kind of a, uh, it was a set of precedent one way or the other, hopefully in the direction of shutting down ag and stopping this kind of law from spreading. Um, so there's, there's a lot riding on it. It's a bit of a test case for the industry. I think they're using, uh, trying to make an example out of me. Yeah. And it's also a test case for us because we want to stop this kind of law from being used again to prevent um, prevent footage from being shown, which is, that's exactly why they're doing it. Well, I think the industry realises now that people can create their own media. Uh, we, we don't need to rely on on the mainstream media anymore and obviously with with social media facebook particularly information can be shared so i think that the industry really wants to start coming down hard on on activists who are getting stuff done and getting stuff out there yeah i think that's very very clear they're, they're getting scared and they're fighting back with new interesting tactics mm-hmm. well we wish you all the best chris thank you um, is, did you want to mention anything else, either about Dominion or the website or <laughs> before um, we finish up? I'll just uh, say Dominion, I'm, I'm hoping to release it in March next year and I'm, I'm working on a trailer for it at the moment, uh, which hopefully will be out within the next month. And is there a Dominion website people can go to or do they just go to the Aussie Farms? Just go to the Aussie Farms website, it's just aussiefarms.org.au slash Dominion. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And good luck with everything. Anyone interested in learning more about Chris's work can check out www.aussiefarms.com.au and all those details will be up on the Animal Nation Facebook page. I think we'll have a song now. Here's Moby with Mistake. 
Last week when doing the afternoon feeds, we saw our, our elderly you Sybil down in the paddock. My heart felt a pang of fear when I first laid eyes on her as I was sure she was dead. She just looked so still and stiff. But to our great relief and happiness, she was alive. Robin helped her into a sitting position as I rushed to get our mule to transport her down to the barn. We lifted her up and unresisting, she sat with Robin, supporting her as we drove through the forest that separates the top paddocks from the bottom. Sybil is one of those miracle stories of survival. Pregnant, emaciated and left for dead, she was rescued and after a few days her baby was delivered with some help but perfectly healthy. Due to her poor condition, Sybil never produced milk, meaning her daughter needed to be bottle fed. But they stayed together and without doubt it was her baby's presence that gave her the will to fight. After six weeks of daily physio and plenty of TLC, Sybil walked. She and her daughter have since lived happily in freedom together. Against the odds, their family remained intact. So that day when we drove her to the barn, it was the first time they had been separated. It is always difficult having to act without being able to explain. Her daughter called out and the rest of the flock looked on warily. I so wished I could speak their language. Fortunately, by the time we lifted Sybil off the mule and onto a soft bed of hay, she had found her legs again and stood up. She enjoyed a bowl of warm pollard and pallets. For two days, she stayed in the shelter and security of the barn. It was a long two days, though, and she was clearly lonely and started to pine for her friends and her daughter. On the third day, we walked together, just the two of us, back up to the top paddock. She followed along a few steps behind me, cautiously looking around her as we moved through the forest. The look on her face when she heard the voices of her flock was one of relief and happiness, just like mine two days before when I realised she was still alive. She trotted through the gates and immediately her daughter came up and sniffed her all over and then didn't leave her side for the rest of the day. The other older ladies came over too and shortly they were back in their usual group that I call the knitting club. All was right with the world. We are keeping a close eye on her, but we know this winter will be hard, for she is also in the winter of her life. But it's a privilege to care for her, for anyone in their last years. I worked in aged care for a long time and will always treasure the lessons I learned and experiences I had. The resilience and wisdom of my clients never ceased to amaze me. To be able to assist someone with, to live with dignity and freedom at the end of their lives is an incredible gift. This is our mission for the sanctuary. Driven by compassion, we aim to give a safe, loving home where lives can be enjoyed to the fullest, but also ultimately a place to die in freedom. I feel so fortunate to see the world the way I do, not blinded by tradition or habit, and I know more and more people are removing their blindfolds and really seeing the symbols of the world for who they are, as people, not products. Death comes to us all. If we act with compassion, disrespect doesn't have to the choice is yours well that brings us to the end of this week's animal nation i hope you enjoyed the show thanks again to chris del force for talking to me check the animal nation page for links to chris's work next week i'll be sharing an interview i did a few weeks back with air peninsula local and marine conservationist brinkley davies brinkley a vegan of nine years and one time competitive surfer established balu blue foundation in 2016 and has since worked on campaigns to stop big oil in the great australian bite and educational programs aimed at reducing rubbish in our oceans she's an inspiring woman so i hope you can join me for that until then be kind and remember the words of Henry Beston, they are not underlings, they are other nations.